So far we've looked at finding the modulus and the argument of complex numbers. We're now going to look at what happens if you take two complex numbers and multiply them together, in other words, find their product, and see whether there is a link between the modulus and the argument of the answer with the modulus and the argument of the original two numbers. We're then going to do the same, but look at the quotient. So what happens if you divide one complex number by another? How does the modulus and the argument of the answer relate to the modulus and the argument of the original two numbers? We're going to start with two complex numbers. Z1 is 3 plus 2i and Z2 is 5 plus i. I'd like to find the product Z1, Z2 and the quotient Z1 divided by Z2. Pause the PowerPoint here to calculate those two things and then when you're done, unpause to carry on. So we've got that Z1 is 3 plus 2i and Z2 is 5 plus i. From that, the product Z1, Z2 is 13 plus 13i and the quotient Z1 over Z2 is 17 over 26 plus 7 over 26i. So we've now got four complex numbers. We've got Z1, Z2, product Z1, Z2 and the quotient Z1 over Z2. For each of those complex numbers, I'd like you to do a sketch on an argon diagram and find the modulus and the argument for each of those four. I'd like you to write down what you notice. So pause the PowerPoint now, calculate each of those values and write down what you notice. Okay, so the values we should have got are the modulus of Z1 is root 13 and the argument of Z1 in degrees is 33.7. Z2, the modulus was root 26, the argument was 11.3 degrees. For Z1, Z2, the modulus is 13 root 2, and the argument is 45 degrees. And then for the quotient, we've got the modulus is root 2 over 2, the argument is 22.4. So if we just have a look and see if we can see any connection between those numbers. So the first connection is that if you take the modulus of Z1 and the modulus of Z2 and multiply those two numbers together, root 13 multiplied by root 26, you'll find, you can put that into a calculator, you'll find that the answer is 13 root 2 when it's simplified. So you can see that the product of those two moduli um, gives us the answer that's the modulus of Z1, Z2. We can also notice that if we divide those two moduli, so root 13 divided by root 26, and simplify that answer down, the answer is root 2 over 2, which is the modulus of Z1 over Z2. So what that tells us really is that if you take the modulus of Z1 and the modulus of Z2, it doesn't matter whether you find the modulus first and then multiply or divide, or whether you multiply or divide the numbers first and then find the modulus at the end, the answer will be the same in both cases. Now looking at the arguments, there is also a link, but this time it involves adding. So if we add the argument of Z1 to the argument of Z2, the answer adds up to the argument of the product Z1, Z2. Similarly, we can subtract if we do 33.7 take away 11.3, the answer we get is 22.4. That is the argument of the quotient. So the rule in general is if you've got two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, um, then you can find the product of Z1 and Z2 and then find the modulus of that answer. That will give you the same results as if you find the modulus of Z1, the modulus of Z2 and multiply those two numbers together. If you find the quotient Z1 divided by Z2 and then find the modulus of that answer, then that is the same as if you find the modulus of Z1, the modulus of Z2, and divide the numbers first. And then with the arguments, you just need to remember that instead of multiplying and dividing, it's adding and subtracting. So we've got uh, the argument of the product Z1, Z2 is the same as the argument of Z1 plus the argument of Z2. And the argument of the uh, quotient Z1 over Z2 is the same thing as the argument of Z1 minus the argument of Z2. Okay, so here is an example of how this might work. We've got uh, two complex numbers, Z1, which is minus 1 plus 3i, 
and z2, which is minus 4, minus 2i. First thing we want to do is we want to find z1, z2, and we want to find z1 over z2. But we want to find it in the form r bracket cos theta plus i sine theta. So for this, uh, it, it would be helpful if we had if we could use the rules to find the modulus and the argument z1, z2, and z1 over z2, uh, because the modulus and the argument are then going to appear in the answer. So the modulus is going to appear there. The argument is going to appear there. So if we can calculate those things, it will make it a bit easier for us. So the answer, the first thing we need to do is we actually need to just find the modulus of Z1 and the modulus of Z2. We would do that as usual by doing a quick sketch of Z1 on an Argan diagram and a quick sketch of Z2 just to make sure that we've got the answer looking right. Uh, we would find modulus using Pythagoras and the argument using trigonometry using tan. All right, so just notice that um, Z2 has got a negative argument. Okay, that is because when you plot Z2 on the Argan diagram, um, it, it's, got, it's below the, um, the, the real axis. It's going uh, clockwise. So a sketch will always help to make sure you don't make any mistakes with that. So now that we've got the individual moduli, the individual arguments, we can then use the rules to work out what the modulus and the argument are going to be of the product and the quotient. So modulus of Z1, Z2 is just the product of the two moduli. So it's going to be root 10 times 2 root 5. So the modulus of that product is going to be 10 root 2. The argument of that product is uh, going to be the sum of uh, the argument of Z1 and the argument of Z2. So add those two numbers together. When we add those together, we get minus 45. So Z1, Z2 is going to uh, have an R value, a, a modulus of 10 root 2, and an argument of minus 45. So it can be written in this form. 10 root 2 bracket cos negative 45 plus I sine negative 45. I'm going to just pause there for a minute to copy down the answer. OK, now for the quotient then. So the modulus of Z1 over Z2 is just the modulus of Z1 divided by the modulus of Z2. That works out at root 2 over 2. And the argument of Z1 over Z2, remember the rule for the argument is that you subtract. So the argument of Z1 minus the argument of Z2. Now here, because we've got minus a negative, it actually ends up being plus. So we end up with an argument of the answer as being uh, 261.8. So uh, Z1 over Z2 can be written in the form R bracket cos theta plus I sine theta as root 2 over 2 bracket cos 261.8 plus I sine 261.8. Okay, so for the following pairs of complex numbers, I'd like you to do the same as you've just done on the previous example. I'd like you to find uh, the product Z1 and uh, Z1, Z2 and Z1 over Z2 in the form R cos theta plus I sine theta. So you'll need to do that by finding the modulus and argument of each of the two complex numbers and then use the rule to find the modulus and the argument of the product and the quotient. So it's always a good idea to do a sketch on an Argan diagram of the original complex numbers and the product just so that you can look and see if it looks sensible. Um, once you've done that, have a look at the next slide with the answers. Make sure you've got them right.